Ashafata, she's standing by along with us right now, waiting for Mr. Atwal to speak. So obviously, uh, many people now interested in what he has to say because his invitation mm -hmm. to the reception has caused the government such great embarrassment. It has, uh, Michael, and I can see that the lawyer is coming back into the room, so I'll stop speaking if they start speaking. But I should let the public know that our colleagues who are in that room have had access to the statement. They have tweeted it out. In it, Gil we anticipate is going to renounce any form of terrorism and offer an explanation about his interest and excitement about going to India for this event and that he was allowed to do so. Okay, let's now listen to just Paul Atwal, but right now it begins with uh, Rishi Gill, his lawyer. Uh, 15, if not 20 minutes uh, availability for you today. Um, the way that this is going to work is that Mr. Atwal uh, has prepared a written statement. He will be reading it to you. You've already received copies. Um, I think the people who are, uh, some people who might uh, be listening in have received uh, copies. There are two documents that we will refer to under what I'm question, I assume, uh, that will be disclosed uh, by electronic copy. There's a bit of vetting that has to be done, and those refer to a parole report. The parole report and um, a, uh, uh, some visas that were issued by the uh, Indian government in 2017. So, with that said, um, I, I guess let's begin. Mr. Atwal will, will uh, read his statement for everyone. Since my attendance to reception for the Prime Minister in India, I have been completely overwhelmed by the coverage that has occurred in the press. I don't fault the press for the recording, but I do want everyone to appreciate how difficult it is for the person who becomes center for the international media attention. As my lawyer mentioned, I will now provide my statement for the record. My counsel will be answering any question on the, my behalf. If there are any questions he is not able to answer, I will make sure my best effort to provide a clear response very shortly. Almost 40 years ago, I, like many other Sikhs, become caught up in a movement supporting the independent Sikh nation. Well, nothing can excuse my conduct. I can only say that, that during that time, in the early 1980s, I reacted to the Indian Army storming the Golden Temple in Amritsar in a way that has caused much pain to many individuals. 32 years ago, in 1986, I committed great offense to my minister, state from India, who was making a personal visit to British Columbia. I was convicted of attempted murder in 1987. I have nothing but regret and remorse for my action and his and the suffering I caused to the victim. What I did was described as an act of terror by the judge who dealt with this matter. I expect full responsibility. I do not disagree with the court's conclusion. In 1987, I was sentenced for the 20-year imprisonment. After serving approximately five years of my sentence, I was granted depot. I deserve the punishment I received, and I have done my best to redeem myself and to become someone who contributes to Canada and the Indian community. I am now almost 63 years old. I am a husband, father, and grandfather. I again denounce any form of terrorism. I do not advocate in any sense for an independent Sikh nation. I like the vast majority of Sikhs who once advocate for the cause have reconciled with the nation of India. India has also has been reconciled with these same Sikhs who once sought independence. Canada is my home, India is my homeland. I am very proud of Canadian and Indian 
Enriquez. I have will be active in the community in Canada. I have done my best to give back and take on a leadership role when necessary and to help where I'm needed. I have been engaged with my political process and have tried to make sure the needs of my community were addressed. I have met politicians who have wanted to reach out the Indian community. I have had assist with making sure the Indian community was able to communicate with politicians. I have acted this way whether the politicians were from the NDP, liberal or conservative. I have met with been photographed with many politicians from all old parties. I have visited in India numerous times since my release from custody most recently in 2017 and the 2018. I visited India two times in 2017 and once so far 2018. Each time I visited in India, I was given visa by the Indian government. At all time I visited India lawfully and with the full permission of the Indian government. There were no restrictions placed on me by Canada so that I could not travel. In late December and early January of this year, I made plan to once again travel to India. Before leaving Vancouver, I'll reach out Mr. Sarai to see whether there was any possibility of attending the reception for the Prime Minister during the government to India. I was eventually provided invitation by the Canadian ambassador and attended a reception. When my attendance become the news story that brings us here today, I was completely shocked and devastated. When I asked to consider attending the reception, I had assumed there would be no problem. No one had any point indicate there would be any issue. On this previous occasion in 2013 and 2014, I had visited to the House of Commons in Ottawa and will be provided with clear visit of us. In the end, I'm sorry for the embarrassment this matter has caused to Canada, India, my community and family and friends. However, I want to again stress this terrible event that happened in the past are something I live with every day and to take complete responsibility for. I just like the Sikh community and Indian generally have moved on from the issue that divided us almost 40 years ago. I hope we can all have the opportunity to see our fault and take responsibility for our action that caused harm. I hope we can all do our best to correct the behavior and become contribu contributing member of society. Thank you for your time today. My lawyer will answer further questions. If he is not able to answer a specific question, I will do my best to provide him proper and clear response, response shortly. Thank you. Could you slide down to the microphone, please? Quite far away. Sorry. Would you slide down? Oh, yeah. sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm sure it, nobody has any questions. <laughs> you do. So, yeah, go ahead. So, just what was wondering if your client can answer this one. There's a uh, controversy going on that maybe Indian agencies had something to do with this whole uh, controversy. What is this really Mr. Atwal at no point has uh, uh, considered himself or uh, been approached uh, in such a fashion by any Indian representative that he would act as an agent of some sort. Uh, there was some banding about of the word informant. Uh, that is 
not uh, correct. He absolutely denies that. If somebody wishes to go on the record and provide proof, uh, whether documentary proof or give their actual name as to who's making those uh, um, accusations, he'll be extremely happy to deal with that and we'll wait to, uh, to hear from that. So it's denied. Why did Mr. Atwal want to attend this event with the Prime Minister? Mr. Atwal has, throughout um, his involvement with the Indo-Canadian community, attended many events. He was in India at the time. He has attended functions where uh, Mr. Trudeau, before he was Prime Minister, I'm not sure if it was after as well, but I'm sure that before he was Prime Minister, was in attendance and was the guest of honour. Uh, he is gay, politically engaged, and he reached out to Mr. Sarai very casually and said, if there's a uh, possibility of me going, then I would like to go. That was the end of it. It was no more controversial than that. Given Mr. Atwal's criminal past, does he concede that it could be discomforting for politicians to accuse him of politicians in the pictures of politicians, some politicians would be uneasy about being in the frame of them? No, absolutely. I, 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 but <laughs> that's, absolutely, does he agree that the reason we're here today is because clearly there was some discomfort with what has occurred. I mean, that's that's an obvious position, and he doesn't dispute that. I think what Mr. Atwal is here today to make sure is clear, and there's a secondary theme that we want to get into uh, over and above Mr. Atwal specifically, which I'll, which I'll get to, but what he wants to make clear is he has been welcomed on numerous occasions by political parties of all stripes to their events. He, let me finish. He basically went to this occasion, put his name in, he assumed he was vetted appropriately, he has not hid who he was, he's not changed his name. His, if you Google Mr. Atwal, you'll find information about him. It's not as if um, the fact that the events that occurred again almost four decades ago were not in the news. If you're, some, I'm not saying this is the way of trying to words your mouth, but if somehow you're flipping the, the onus on him to say he should have done something differently, all he can say is this. He went through the proper channels. He did what he um, thought was, again, a, a, not an extremely uh, uh, aggressive request, simply just if there's a, availability and a space for me, I can get in, I'd like to go. And that was it. And when, when he, this whole... Uh, uh, matter exploded, he removed himself from the situation. So I'm not sure what more I think needs to be answered about that. But if he acknowledges discomfort, why does he pose for pictures of politicians in Canada? I'm sorry, does it, uh, it, there's... Yeah. Uh, what efforts are made by a security personnel in a Canadian or Indian? Oh, he has no idea because that's not his. He, he can't. He can't speak to that. He was never approached um, to. Uh, no, absolutely not. He was. He's the game. This is not the first time that he has gone to a political event. And again, uh, I think it's very clear. Let's make sure this is this is uh, on the record that Mr. Atwal presents absolutely no security threat to this country or any other country. And the best example of that is the one country that was, uh, I mean, Canada was affected, obviously, but directly affected by the incident that occurred was India. A Indian national, a, a, a state politician, was almost killed by Mr. Atwal. He doesn't deny that. India has led him back into the country to visit. India provided three visas in 2017. One was a, a visa for one month. He had to reapply in the summertime of last year, and he was given a three-month visa. He was then given a one-year visa in, late in the year. Now, if India has no problem with him attending, given the concern, and security officials that have been reported in the media have been quoted as saying he doesn't pose a threat, uh, he was a political embarrassment apparently to the prime minister, and that, you know, that's obviously accepted. Uh, with that said, the fact that he was not approached did not surprise him, but if there is further uh, measures that need to be taken, that's up to the government. Again, Mr. Atwell is here today to say that he's gotten in the middle of this, he is a contributing member of society, and he wants to get on with things. Um, and he's here today to deal with this as best he can. How did you get removed from the blacklist? Oh, as, as I understand, and again, this is probably a question for India. Um, India, again, as I understand it, um, has been reevaluating uh, subjects that were on the blacklist um, on a continual basis. Mr. Atwal wasn't the only person that I understand was removed last year. I have no first-hand knowledge, but what I understand is that there was about
about 150, if not more, people that were removed at the same time that Mr. Atwal was removed. My understanding, again, is that the Indian government seeks reconciliation uh, in a lot of fashion. Um, and on that basis, he was allowed to travel. There was no, there was no, at any point, illegal entry on the part of Mr. Um, Atwal to India. At no point. I just want to draw you out a little bit further here. How would you describe Mr. Atwal's relationship with government officials in India and Indian diplomats in Canada? You say he's not acting as an agent, so have diplomats there or here ever asked him for help or advice? What kind of relationship is The only relationship that Mr. Atwal um, has that, that uh, uh, he's here to advise anybody of today that I'm aware of, that I've been made aware of, is that he has facilitated radio interviews because he's involved in the media. But as far as being some sort of um, agent, as I said, if somebody wants to give me a specific example of when he's done this, or what evidence they have of this, I I'd like to hear it. Does he have friends? No, 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 I've asked, no, I've, I've said to you, do you have a specific example that I can address? Because I'd love to do it. Do you have one? Just trying to get very sensitive. I've got a question, which is, and I'm happy to answer. Do you have, let, let me finish. I've got it, I've, let me finish. I've got a specific question for you, which is, do you have an example of anything he's done that I can answer because I'd love to do it. Did Mr. Atwell have any contact with diplomats, the consulates, so on and so forth, outside of the normal application process for visas? Uh, I have uh, no um, information that he did that. I don't believe that that was the case. I'll confirm that with him and get back if you'll, again, send me, we'll be happy to answer that question. But as I said, there was nothing in Mr. Atwell's um, uh, behavior that should cause anyone concern. And again, if and I'll say this again for probably the fifth or sixth time. If anybody has a specific accusation that they can point to, I'd like to hear it. Because that's no different. I don't mean any disrespect. And saying, can you tell me um, when you stopped snorting cocaine? You know, um, did you? Like, you know, I mean, he, how, how does he prove a negative? I'm not saying you do at all, but that's the absurdity of the question. If I have a specific example of misbehavior, I'll put it to you. If you want to give me a specific example where somebody can say, hey, he was seen uh, in the company of this person uh, for hours, and then immediately after he did this, then let's, let's get that out there. He's not hiding from that. But give me that before anybody asks questions. They're just based on really um, specious accusations. That's, that's really disgraceful, quite frankly. It's not an accusation. It's a simple question. It, what kind of relationship does he have with Indian diplomats? There is nothing more than a, a relationship that where you facilitate contact with uh, radio stations and say that you want to be interviewed in the Punjabi community any more than you'd be facilitating contact with members of the Indian community in Canada. So there's no close relationship with any diplomats. And again, if somebody has information to the contrary, let, let's hear it. Can you talk about the relationship between Mr. Atwal and Randy Sarai? It says in his statement that he approached him for an invitation to this event. Uh, what is the relationship? It's, it's nothing more than Mr. Um, Atwal and Mr. Sarai being part of the same community. Mr. Atwal is involved in politics and he knows Mr. Sarai on that basis. They don't... Um, <laughs> they're, they're friends in the sense that they're friendly. I don't. Well, I would not at all characterize them as being uh, buddies, if I can put it that way. But they're acquainted with the same way Mr. Um, Atwal is acquainted with many politicians, whether it's conservatives or liberals or the NDP. Mm -hmm. That's what he's been. That's that's what he's been involved in. You said that he's been invited to other events uh, or, or other events uh, with politicians from other parties. Can you, can you tell me the names of those politicians? What were those events? We're not. Look, what I'll say this: I've, I've put that on the record. Uh, on his behalf. If there's any politician who wants to specifically deny at some point that they've never had contact with him, uh, he, he'll deal with that. I, I say at this point, um, politicians, uh, and I'm not here to put anybody on the spot, <clears throat> but politicians in all parties um, have dealt with Mr. Atwal on a completely professional basis. If anybody wants to come forward again and deny that they had, um, uh, South Asian politician most particularly, deny that they've ever had anything to do with them, they should put that forward, and if it's not true, we'll deal with it. But other than that, he can simply say he's had contact, he's gone to engagements. If you want to have specific um, examples, we'll, we can attempt to put that together for you. Again, if you leave your information, and we'll get back to you on that point. I'll make a note of it. Since, 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 since India has been saying that Canada is patronizing Khalistani, and Mr. Aguad is a changed man now, he's saying that he's a proud Canadian of Indian heritage. What is his position on what India is doing right now? I mean, attacking Canada consistently. 
He doesn't. What? So, sorry, Mr. Atwal is not some sort of diplomatic member of, of the of the Canadian uh, Foreign Service. Mr. Atwal is a private citizen that's engaged in the political process, that's made his position pretty clear as to what his involvement is. Now, I think. You know, he, how can he possibly comment on what India has been doing? I think, other than saying, I think that there has been movement on the Canadian side and on the Indian side to hopefully seek some sort of uh, rapprochement on, on the relationships on this issue. But there's always going to be tensions. But I, I, I want to, if I, you know, you'll know, keep asking questions for a few more minutes, anyways. But I want to also make sure there's there's another theme here, which I uh, alluded to earlier, a secondary uh, thing, and, and that's part of why I uh, am uh, involved in this case, which is. One of the issues is specific, obviously, to Mr. Atwal, okay, which is his um, uh, actions that he takes responsibility for, what's occurred, his right to be in the public sphere, despite the embarrassment it may cause, uh, his right to have pictures uh, of himself taken if the other politicians want to do that. Again, he's not hidden. There's a secondary issue, and this is much more broad, but it is this issue of um, an obsession, if I can put it that way, with some members of the media, uh, particular members, with a struggle uh, between uh, militants who caused great vi violence uh, from the Sikh um, community in India and here, and the Indian government that occurred when I, I'm 51 this year, that occurred when I was in grade 10, okay, that was in the 80s. Now, people have to move past things, and if you talk to any respectable member of the Punjabi community, of the South Asian community, Anybody except the same usual suspects that a lot of reporters will go to, and quite frankly, generally not South Asian members, but they will, the South Asians will tell you it's not at anywhere near a concern that it was almost four decades ago, okay? And what this, this is, I want to, I want to call it fear-mongering, uh, but this type of hysteria, uh, when they call Mr. Atwal a terrorist even today, you can say he committed an act of terror, he admits that. To say now, as a reporter said a, a few weeks ago, I think in a, in a, a very well-known reporter, that he should somehow be on the no-fly list for an event that occurred that was horrible, again, almost four decades ago, that's outrageous. That's outrageous um, type of commentary. And the South Asian community is, I say, um, recognizes the problems in the past in this issue, and I'm sure anybody that was around during that time in the 80s and saw what was going on in the temples and obviously Air India and a lot of other things, um, I think they would be quite cognizant of that fact. To say today, in entering the third decade of the 21st century, that we are at the level we are at because of this incident on that specific issue is interesting. I'll leave it at that. And that's another theme that, that needs to be put forward, and you can do with it what you will. But I think that if you approach a lot of respectable members of the South Asian community, um, who are professionals, who are involved in politics, you can't speak to the judiciary, but there's people in the judiciary who have uh, parents that had backgrounds in the uh, World Sikh Organization. If you speak to those people, they'll probably give you a slightly different take on everything. But we appreciate it's always going to be out there. But, but to say that um, it is at the extent that it's at now is, is just not on. And we have been listening to lawyer Rishi Gill in Vancouver and before him Mr. Gill's um, client Jaspal Atwal. Mr. Atwal at the center of controversy after attending a reception for the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau during his visit in India. Now this is the photograph that caused the government a lot of embarrassment as you see Mr. Atwal is standing beside the Prime Minister's wife. Now, as for Mr. Atwal himself, he was convicted for attempted murder some 32 years ago of a visiting Indian Minister of State. He was also a member of a Sikh separatist group, a group that was sympathetic to Sikh separatism. And during the news conference that we were just watching, Mr. Atwal says that this has been a difficult past few weeks for him. He also says he's now re renouncing any form of terrorism. And with that, I want to bring in Natasha Fata. She's been listening alongside with us. So many people waiting to hear from Mr. Atwal, as he has been the center of controversy ever since uh, the PM's trip to India. Anything stand out? for you in the statements that we heard from either Mr. Atwal or his lawyer? Yes, absolutely, because we've been waiting to find out how did he show up there. That's been the question for many people. Who vetted him? How did he show up? Who let him in? And so from uh, Mr. Atwal's perspective, we got that clarification uh, according to him. So I'm going to read parts of the statement that he read out. 
He was already planning to be in India in December and January of this year, and he said he reached out, before leaving from Vancouver, where he lives, reached out to Mr. Randeep Sarai, who was a Liberal MP of that area, he is now no longer a member of the Liberal Caucus, to see whether there was any possibility of attending the reception with the Prime Minister during the PM's trip to India. He says, I was eventually provided an invitation by the Canadian Ambassador and attended the reception. So he had assumed that there would be no problems. We heard from his lawyer that Mr. Atwal just made a request. I'm going to be in India anyway. I'd like to go to this event. He had assumed if there's any concern he would have been vetted, that he would have gone through whatever checks the government needs to go through. He's not on any list. He's not hidden his identity or his name. He said simply by looking up Mr. Atwal's name, you would be able to figure out who he is. So that is the central issue of how he got there. We also got clarification directly from Jasper, uh, Jasper Atwal that he has been to India numerous times. He has been given a visa. This has not been an issue in the past. He also says he's been a political activist within the South Asian community for many, many years. He has met with and worked with members of the NDP, the Liberals and the Conservatives. So he's been photographed with all of these politicians. We heard that he's even been uh, photographed with the Prime Minister before, and even before the Prime Minister became the Prime Minister. So clearly there's a pattern of activism within the community. For him, this was a non-issue. And beyond that, I think it's really important to note that he is saying one of the first things he said is that I again renounce any form of terrorism. He takes responsibility for what happened in the 80s. He admits what he did, but he says, I do not advocate in any sense for an independent Sikh nation. I, like the vast majority of Sikhs who once advocated for this cause, have reconciled with the nation of India. He says, Canada is my home. India is my homeland. I'm a Canadian who's proud of his Indian heritage. And he says that is the end of that. He hasn't done anything wrong. Okay, and, uh, and very quickly, because I know you know this, uh, but uh, Mr. Sarai, who you referenced, still a Liberal, no longer a member of the Pacific Caucus uh, for the, the Liberals that are in Ottawa right now. Natasha, thank you. And we should also say that that news conference does continue in Vancouver. We're tracking it for you. And any important news that comes out of that, we'll bring that to you again.